Welcome to the virtual coaching session with Robbie Frank. We've got the office here, we got me, and we got a whiteboard here. So we have everything we need to get started. So guys, just give me a quick sound check. Just let me know on your side if you can hear everything perfectly, and then I'll know we can get started. So just give me a quick yes in the comments if you guys can hear me. Okay, good, good. Thank you guys, cool. So let me set up a quick uh, expectations, introductions into what we're going to do right now. So basically uh, I've decided to set up these weekly trainings, these weekly coaching calls, vir totally virtual, totally free uh, for everybody from Primatica's clients to uh, people who you wanna join and anybody who you wanna put into this uh, as well as business entrepreneurs, anyone can basically join. Uh, the point of these calls is twofold. So this is for me as much as it is for you. Uh, my goal here is to help disrupt your thinking and to help you disrupt the way that you're currently uh, doing business, the way that you're currently managing yourself in life. Uh, and it's also to disrupt myself because that's what I do best. So I'm going to introduce you a bit more about myself, a bit more about my story. Uh, I'm going to start with why you shouldn't listen to me. Uh, and after that, I'll talk about why you might want to listen to me. I'm also going to explain a bit more about how I think and my strategies, uh, as well as some of the biggest mistakes that I've made uh, on my journey so far. And if you come out of this questioning every, everything about what you're doing, basically questioning, am I doing the right thing right now? Am I thinking the right way about my business, about my life? then that's a very good sign. That means I did what I'm supposed to do. Uh, you're supposed to leave this split, this event somewhat uncomfortable, somewhat not sure uh, if you're doing the right thing or not. And at the very least having a better direction, a new direction for what you're currently doing. So uh, one quick note before we get started, uh, the more questions you guys ask, the better. So uh, I really like the engagement. So at any point during this uh, meeting, feel free to uh, either ask to unmute yourself, to ask a quick question, or just write a quick question in the chat and I'll reply to it uh, whenever I see it. Uh, this makes the conversation a lot better, a lot more informative, uh, and it makes everybody uh, just get a lot more value from the event. So let's start off uh, giving a quick introduction about who I am and why you should listen to me and why you should not listen to me. So my name is Robbie Frank. Um, 26 years old, married and have a child. Uh, I'm the owner of Primatica, as you can see, a B2B marketing automation company, uh, as well as an author, a coach, uh, and just a general crazy person. Uh, what, I've do, what I've done throughout my entire life was uh, disrupt things, was to basically uh, see how much I can take my ideas and grow them and make them turn into beautiful, uh, massive constructions uh, whether it's on the digital space or uh, in, in, the real, in the real world. So uh, when I started Primatica, uh, what was in my head was a very simple question. And that simple question was, how am I going to create a system that's going to allow me to scale my company's growth? Because all of my life, I was looking for the magic system to grow my businesses, grow my ideas. And all my life, I couldn't find that, that magical thing. And what would always happen is I would start a business, I would get it to a certain point, uh, and then I would get stuck because uh, I would usually go at it alone. I would usually start off uh, just doing everything by myself, reaching a certain critical mass, uh, and then pretty much just crashing because I would either uh, just lose motivation along the way, or I would have so many clients in a short amount of time that I would just not be able to handle them. So I would basically Put myself in very bad situations uh, again and again and again uh, and then i just would not know what to do with them so uh, one of the things we've done differently with primatica was to create a situation where we're always hiring new people so at this point uh, almost a year into primatica we're actually a team of 30 people uh, everything from developers to marketing people salespeople, uh, virtual assistants uh, even a, a CEO, so a person who basically manages our entire organization. And I'm going to get into that uh, a bit later. So 
going back to my story, um, I basically find myself throughout my, my entire life just going up and down. Uh, and you guys probably relate to this, seeing uh, my, my life, my health, my income, uh, just kind of fluctuate all the time. And pretty much every entrepreneur uh, can relate to this, reaching some point, uh, but then kind of crashing or just getting fixed somewhere or growing very, very slowly and then not being able to pull yourself out of that. So um, with this iteration of what I'm doing, I basically decided to uh, go at a very different route than what I did up till now. I basically asked myself, Robbie, what would happen if instead of trying to do everything yourself, instead of trying to build uh, a business and, and you know, knowing how smart you are, knowing how uh, uh, good you are at what you do, uh, what if this time you actually delegate more, you actually give some responsibility to other people who can actually help you get to where you wanted to get. And I started off uh, doing this with my partner. We started off doing this on a very basic level. Uh, it started off with me actually partnering with somebody. So the fact that I even had a partner in this business uh, was already uh, a very, a very big uh, change because I would always go at everything alone. I would always say to myself, you know, I want to keep as much of the profit as possible. And I believe that if I start off just doing everything myself, then things will just grow better uh, because people are going to slow me down. They're going to be incompetent. Uh, it's, it's not going to be a good fit. That's all. Uh, and then my wife basically told me, Robbie, you, you got to go get a partner uh, because you have your strengths. There's things that you do very well. You're very good at pitching, very good at selling, very good at creating ideas. You're not a good manager. You're not good with handling your finances. You're not good with HR. So you cannot go at it alone. You have to find somebody who's going to help you. And luckily I had that person just kind of waiting for me in my life. And I know for you guys, there's a good chance that somebody like that is waiting in your life. Somebody who you can team up with, somebody that just happens to have the same uh, strengths as you do weaknesses. So whatever you're good at, they're usually bad at, and whatever you're bad at, uh, they're very good at. And uh, that's what I did. I basically partnered with uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Madame, and we partnered uh, together, started off the business together, uh, and uh, things picked up from there. So it was the usual uh, beginning where I would uh, start a business and uh, just like any of you guys probably know, the, the cycle, you, you start a business, you have a new idea, you push it out into the market, you start getting some interest, and things, things start moving forward. And uh, what happens is you start off basically at uh, absolute zero, and then you start off getting your first few clients. And at that point, everything is very exciting. It's, it's very new. Uh, everything is just, is just new and awesome. And uh, you really kind of have that passion. Uh, but then what happens is you reach a certain point where things just kind of start to, to get into a habit. So you just kind of start seeing that that chart of growth that you had starts to slow down a bit and you're not really reaching uh, the, the same enthusiasm that we, you've had at the start, the same creativity where everything you do is just new. Um, and I know I knew that for me, part of my goals were to uh, get to a point where my companies are making $500 million uh, annually. And I knew that one of my other goal was to become an influential author and influential speakers, uh, speaker. And another goal of mine was to become a very successful bookseller and to have multiple companies that, that I own that operate completely independent of me. And with such high goals, I knew that getting to that place is basically going to be very hard if I don't grow like this. It has, I knew it has to be something exponential, something very, very powerful, very quick. And so what I did differently this time, just going back to the idea of hiring people, the idea of not going at it alone, uh, was we started hiring people from day one. So basically the moment that we've started establishing a business process and just, just a quick uh, note, guys, if you guys have any question at any point, just feel free to comment in the chat and I'll be able, I'll be happy to answer. If you also want to talk or ask something, just ask to unmute yourself. So. Essentially, uh, what happened was we got to a point where we started making sales. We started hiring people uh, very early on. But what we would do is we would actually hire people uh, overseas, people that would just take care of basic 
things for us, would uh, do tasks for us, kind of, kind of virtual assistants. And we, me and my partner, we thought we were so smart. We thought we were the smartest guys in the world uh, because, you know, we had people working for us. We almost didn't have to do anything. And, you know, how many of you guys actually relate, you know, to the idea of, you know, I want to start a business. I want to get it to a point where it's working, where I have a couple of clients. And then I want to hire a few people that I'm going to work with and uh, they're going to do all the work and I'm just going to enjoy the benefits and I'm just going to see it, you know, work on its own. So we've had that idea. Uh, we tried it. And what happened was uh, my ambitions grew as the business grew and I wanted to make it bigger. I wanted to make it better. Yeah, exactly. The four hour work week, work week. And uh, Garth, hiring overseas is actually not rough at all. Uh, we've actually built a system, uh, both me and my partner, uh, that enables us to find dozens and dozens of great recruits for overseas uh, on literally on a daily basis. So every single position we want to hire, we're able to hire uh, literally within days. And I'm talking like top-notch talent at prices that are usually a lot cheaper than the United States. And I could go into that later. Uh, but yeah, that, that's one of our secrets on getting to 30 employees so fast and just hiring a bunch of talent. So what I did was I, I started growing the company. We got to a point where we had uh, a few sales going, a few clients. We had uh, what, uh, you know, what most people know as uh, virtual assistants. So the problem with virtual assistants, the problem with most of the way that people hire uh, in general is that they don't hire the right kind of talent because they don't trust uh, that, that the money will actually be used well. So there's four levels of consciousness that uh, my partner taught me. Basically, there's four levels of, of how much responsibility, what kind of an employee you can get. And one of them is what's called an, an operator. So an operator is basically somebody who just does tasks. It's somebody who is not very, very much thinking for himself. He doesn't uh, do anything outside of the lines. Basically, you give him tasks, you teach him what to do, he'll do exactly that. Uh, but the problem is he'll do that and he's not gonna do anything more than that. Uh, so that's, that's one type of person that you can hire. Uh, then you've got uh, a manager. So a manager is a person who uh, you can build a system for them. You can tell them, uh, okay, this is the system. This is how it works. This is the business. Uh, you can work freely, basically within those boundaries and everything here, you can do whatever you want, but they need to have that uh, very clear boundary on what they're supposed to do. Um, and then you've got the higher level person, which is what we call an owner. So an owner is somebody who doesn't need the box. Uh, it's somebody that can get into chaos. And I know I'm kind of all over the place. This will make sense in a moment. So an owner is somebody who can see the box and just say, this box is not good. I'm going to build my own environment. It's somebody that you can put him into any environment and he'll build the environment. So most of you guys on this call are most likely owners or even a level above, which is what we call uh, executives. So executives, uh, the difference between executives and owners is that executive, they don't like to be told what to do. They don't need a box of instructions or a system to work within, and they don't even create one environment. What executives do is they actually create many, many environments, almost like an entire ecosystem. So imagine instead of just the one environment, they actually create many environments uh, that are all intertwined. It's basically the CEO type, uh, the person who likes to be in charge of everything, who always believes he can do anything better than anybody else. And again, you're probably an owner or an executive if you're listening to this. So we, we, we thought we were very smart because we hired a lot of operators. We hired these cheap people who, who worked for us like maniacs. They worked uh, eight, nine hours a day, seven days a week for us. They cost us just a couple of hundred dollars per person per month. Uh, and they just did anything we asked them to do. And we thought that was the best shit ever. Unfortunately, it ended up costing us a lot because what happened was when the company grew, uh, because again, I'm very ambitious and I kept pushing growth. I kept pushing us to grow the company. Um, suddenly we realized it's my brain. It's my partner's brain. And we've got these bunch of, of people that are working for us that are very cheap 
and they can't think on their own. So the problem is with ever increasing complexity, uh, they're not able to handle that increasing complexity. So we said, okay, we got to hire some people who are going to be managers. We got to get people who can who can manage some stuff. You know, who don't just um, do what they're told to do, but they they can think on their own. If you just give them a system where they can operate within that system. So we started hiring managers. We started hiring higher level people who uh, were smarter, uh, were better thinking, better communicated, better in communication. Uh, still not somebody that I would you know, exchange ideas with and, and actually uh, uh, find myself being challenged by, but they would be at a much higher level of intelligence, uh, responsibility, and, and initiative. So we started hiring those, and then the company grew uh, to a point where we were making uh, low five figures, and uh, it worked for a while. So we hired a manager to help us with the onboarding. We hired a manager uh, to help us manage copywriting for our clients. So things started moving forward pretty nicely, uh, but uh, still, uh, we, we grew the company even more and then we reached another uh, point of chaos. So what happened was the rate of acceleration and the, the chaos was big again, and we couldn't actually, uh, the managers couldn't uh, operate properly because the more your company scales, uh, the more you have to, to create new systems. So again, we were back in the exact same position where we were trying to, uh, instead of having to tell them everything they needed to do, we had to always create new systems. So if we didn't create a new system for them all the time, then they would get stuck. So then uh, what we decided to do was to go on to the next level and to start hiring owners, basically to start hiring people uh, that are more expensive, that are smarter, that are, are better capable at dealing with uncertainty. And we hired one of them for the development department and we went from a very confused development department where people uh, were just not able to prioritize things properly. Uh, things always uh, had a huge backlog uh, to a point where everything just happened like a factory. Uh, then we found another person who was an owner and she became our COO. She started off just helping us with small stuff. We realized she's an owner. Immediately we, we, we promoted her to a management position and she just took care of everything. So um, what I'm trying to get to here is if you have a big dream, if you're looking to get to that $500 million point or more than that, um, you're going to have to learn to use people. You're going to have to learn that you cannot go at it alone. And there's really not enough people that you can hire. There's not enough people that you can get on your team. So I, I, I'm a huge sinner in this, by the way. Let me be very clear. I'm a huge sinner because every time I would go up to a higher level and I would say, okay, everything I've done up to this point, it was stupid. I shouldn't have done it. And I'll hand it off to somebody else. Even though at that time, it seemed like it was the perfect thing that I should be doing. I realized, no, I should have gotten somebody who's an owner, who's a manager, who could have freed me to then go ahead and do the higher level things. Um, so, you know, at this point, we're still growing. Uh, we reached a point where in less than a year, uh, we're almost a seven figure company uh, with almost 30 employees. And I believe by the end of the year, uh, we'll get to a point where we have 40, 50 employees and uh, would uh, double the revenue again. And the reason we're on such a colossal uh, growth curve uh, where, you know, a new company, a new idea can get there in, in less than a year is because uh, we never stopped growing. We never stopped hiring. We never stopped uh, pushing for growth. And that was always our number one metric is, is what can we do to keep pushing, to keep growing this company and making sure that we're, we're feeding more people. We're, you know, we have more people that are, that are employees that want to push, they want to do good stuff for us because the more people you hire, the more people you have that are working for you, the good people, uh, the more people, uh, the more agendas there are to make sure your company keep being, keeps being pushed forward. The more clients you have, the more cooperations you're going to create. So a lot of us, what we do is we tend to, to get started thinking outside of the box. We tend to get started being uh, very creative in our businesses, very unique in the way that we think. And then we end up getting stuck. We end up reaching a point where uh, we just start reacting to everything. We start working within uh, very realistic parameters 
And basically, you know, if we have a, a year where we grew the company by 20, 30%, we'll consider that a success. Or if we had a month where we maybe grew the company by a bit, we'll consider that a success. Uh, and that, that, that passion, that growth mindset from the beginning gets lost because again, at some point you just stop the multiplication thinking, you just scale back and you start thinking in increments. And what I want to inspire you to do here, uh, I want to inspire you to start thinking in, in exponential jumps. So how do you do that? You know, how do you go from a business that makes five, ten thousand dollars a month to a business that makes fifty, hundred thousand a month? Or if you have a business that makes fifty, hundred thousand a month, how do you go to five, ten billion a month? How do you do that? How do you make those leaps? And the answer is you make these leaps in in actual jumps. There's no way to get from one point to a much higher point using incremental growth. Incremental growth does not work when you want to scale your company. And the reason for that is very simple. Let's say that right now uh, I'm here doing this from Israel. This is Israel. I know it's funny, but this is how it looks. And across the Mediterranean Sea, uh, we've got Europe. So I want to get from, let's say I want to get from my city to another city. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to walk there or take a bicycle or drive there. I'm going to use a certain vehicle to get there. However, uh, if I want to get to another continent, or even imagine if you're in the USA, you know, the magnificent USA, and you're living in one state, you want to get to another state, you're going to, you can drive there, you can, uh, you can walk there if you're crazy enough. Uh, but basically, you'll choose a vehicle that fits, that fits where you want to get going. However, if your goal is to get from, uh, you know, east, United States to, to the west side of the United States, you're not going to be able to drive there unless you're willing to take a very, very, very long time. And you're definitely not going to be able to walk there or bike there. So you're going to have to pick a different vehicle. You're going to have to take an airplane there. Now, how does this actually relate to business or your life in general? When you want to get your business from a certain point, again, 5,000 to 50,000, 50 to 500,000, 500,000 to a million, to 5 million. When you want to make these leaps, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to change vehicle. What worked for you so far is just not going to keep working for you at those higher levels. This it's the same thing as if as if you take a vehicle. Imagine you take a, a Toyota uh, from 1999 and you want to get it to 200 miles an hour. Uh, it doesn't matter how much you make it aerodynamic, uh, what you do with the engine. You know, if you add nitrous injection. You can, you can try to beef up the car as much as you want, but the problem is it's not going to get to the speeds that you want. And even if you somehow manage to push it there, it's going to be on overdrive and it's not going to last. It's basically you're, you're using a car that you've over, overclocked to such a high degree that the engine's just going to heat up and break. And if you wanted to take it to the next level, now you, you're completely stuck because it's, it's never going to be able to push to that next level and next level without braking. So you're going to have to do what's called uh, self cannibalization. So imagine you, you take your arm, you have to chew it off. You have to eat your own uh, business model. You have to eat your own style of thinking. Uh, you have to eat your habits. Literally you have to self cannibalize and, and eat yourself and trust that whatever's going to come out is going to be better than what happened before. Uh, and this is how we were able to scale this company again in less than a year to almost $100,000 a month. And again, on track to making a lot more than that in the next few months. Uh, just ask me again in three months from now and I guarantee you're gonna double or triple our revenue. So the way that we do that is by using Einstein's uh, uh, famous quote, which is that you cannot solve a problem on the same level that it was created. And that's the biggest sin uh, that we do in our life. We, we try to solve problems in our life at the same level that they were created. And here's what I mean by that. And this, this is going to get into some slightly spiritual stuff, but, uh, you know, I guarantee you guys, this is going to be massive for you. So the way I like to look at it, um, and this, by the way, this applies to 
your, your, your familial life. It applies to your relationships. It applies to any creative goal you have, any business goal you have. Um, this is gonna, this is gonna whack your mind. Uh, I guarantee you. So imagine right now, uh, you're in a floor. Okay. And imagine this floor is, uh, it, 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 that's where you're at. That's the current level that you're op operating in at life. You know, imagine it's like a video game and right now you're at floor or let's even call it level. Uh, you're at, you right now you're at level eight. Okay. What's level eight? You know, level one was a baby. Level two was a kid. Level three, teenager. Level four, young adult, blah, blah, blah. You had ups and downs, you know, good things, bad things. You reach level eight. Most people, what happens is they reach a certain level in their life. They reach level eight, level nine, level 12. Some people get stuck at level five and they just start to, to look at this level and, and get stuck there, which is not natural because as humans, we're supposed to evolve throughout our entire life. So imagine what are the, what are the features and characteristics of each level? Imagine it again, like a floor or a level. Uh, when you, when you're in this floor, and again, let's say this is you, then what's going to happen is this floor, it starts off empty. You know, you've all had that thing in life where you went on to the next level, something in your life really, really changed. And you just, you just moved on to the next level. You know, you, you went from being employed to being a business owner. You went from being uh, a freelancer to employing people. You went from employing people to owning a, a medium-sized corporation, whatever, whatever it may be. And again, this may be your relationships, your, your health, whatever other areas of your life, it applies exactly the same. Whenever you level up, things start off very clean. So, so the floor looks empty and it's full of possibilities. And all you want to do is you want to run around and play in that new level, you know, that new level of thinking uh, that you just got to. Uh, but what then happens is, you know, you run here. So you go ahead and you run. And you say, hey, let's create a building here. So you create, you create some uh, decoration in, in the floor. And now this decoration um, is part of the scenery. And then somebody else comes along to, to your floor. And he says, you know, hi, nice to meet you. And now you've got a friend in this floor, you know, because when you change thought paradigms, usually you tend to attract people that are in those same paradigms. So you've attracted a friend and now you've got a friend here. And oh no, what happened? there's a problem. So now a problem showed up, you know, problem at level eight. And again, level eight could be a business owner. Let's say level eight in this case is you're self-employed. Problem at level eight could be, uh, oh no, you know, I've, I've got five, six clients and you know, it's, it's a lot of work. So I'm going to have to structure my day. I'm going to have to really create a good schedule and make sure that I can get everything done on time. Okay. So that's a level eight problem. Uh, but let's say for you, and you're, you're the owner of a business with 30, 30 employees or 100 employees. For you, uh, level eight is I went to the, uh, to the factory. Uh, it was a good day. You know, the, the, the company, we, we sold a $50,000 deal. Uh, we, you know, there are some problems with the, with the manufacturing or there are some problems uh, with some of the employees. Took care of them. And uh, there's this looming tax thing where I, I know I need to pay $500,000 in taxes. You know, everybody's got their own problems, just like a person on a lower level uh, who's just getting started in life uh, gets a ticket, you know, a $50 ticket. And that's what's going to change their entire day. That's what's going to uh, basically dictate the rest of their day. It's going to emotionally impact them. Uh, and, and that's where they're at. So whatever level you're at, the features are that there are walls. So there's clear about it. It, it looks like this level is, is life. Like, and again, just do some, do some mental checks at what I'm saying and, and, and try to figure out if what I'm saying to you is true. The way you're looking at it, your thought patterns are pretty similar from day to day. So the same problems that you had last week are the same problems that you have this week. And the same uh, good things that happened to you a month ago are the same good things that happened to you right now. So basically the, the good things are at this level and the bad things are at this level. So what happens is uh, every day, New stuff pops up at this level. Again, new people, new problems, new opportunities. They pop up at this level. And, and you have multiple choices. You can engage with these problems. So for example, uh, again, you're a freelancer. There's a problem with, with one client. That's a big deal. You can choose to engage with it. You can choose to run away from it. Whatever the case may be, 
the features are you're reacting to it. You're emotionally reacting to the situation. It takes up your attention. That's why you spend most of your time thinking about this is the level where you're at. So let's say a problem popped up and you spent all day solving this problem and you finally solved it. There's no more problem. You know, whatever problem so popped up in your life, you solved it. You're happy and you feel good. What happens when you feel good? You're not really motivated to, to try to think in different ways. Cause say I had a problem, I solved my problem. And then you sit down, you relax. And then the next day, another problem comes up in the same level. You solve it again, or maybe this is a bigger problem than you used to. So you run away from it. Doesn't matter whether you solved your problem, whether you didn't solve your problem, whether you ran away from it, whether you delegated it, whether whatever you did with this problem, the fact that you spent your day thinking about this level, thinking in, in these terms, uh, means that you did not go up a level. So whether you win, whether you solved your problems, or whether you had a victory here, it doesn't matter. You're basically fighting against uh, illusions. Imagine like the movie, The Matrix, where you know the, the hero, Neo, finds out that his entire life is a lie. He's basically stuck in this uh, illusion, in this uh, simulation that's not real. And what that means is no matter what he does in the simulation, it doesn't actually amount to anything. So here's my suggestion to you. The cool part about life is that you can never go down a level. So if you're an adult, you can never go down to the level of a young adult. If you own a business that makes $10 million a year, you can never go back to thinking like a guy who made, who's had a business that makes a million dollars a year. You cannot go down in your consciousness. So given the fact that you cannot go down, it means that whatever investments you make to go up levels is permanent. The, the problem is that you're not aware that there's a higher level because you're saying in the future, I, I might go up a level. In the future, I might incrementally solve enough problems on this level until I'll, I'll, something will happen. And this is the key here. I'll solve enough problems at this level and then something will happen and magically everything will be better. However, uh, anyone here who's been alive for more than 25 years know it does not work like that. Um, the more you solve problems at this level, uh, the more you stick at this level. So what do you do? How do you actually go from here to a much better place? The answer is you have to level up. And notice every floor is exponentially bigger than the previous floor. It basically encapsulates everything you've done so far, and it's also bigger in size. It basically exponentially increases your reality. So you've got a problem in your life, whatever problems you may have. And again, we can do this as an exercise if anybody wants to, to join, to ask a question, uh, whether again, just ask a question in chat or uh, you actually wanna ask me a question and, and you want me to hear what you have to say, uh, just comment in the chat. So, and we can actually do an exercise and try to see what, what that is for you. So you're stuck in this level. How do you actually level up? The answer is you have to realize that what you're fighting here is an illusion. It's not real. The problems that are so big in your head right now, they're not actual problems. Your mind gave you the story that they are a problem. And here's a great way how I can, um, how I can show this to you guys. So think about a company like Apple. Uh, I'm assuming most of you guys know Apple. I'm a huge Apple fan. I've got an Apple watch. I've got an AirPods. I've got an iPhone. And you know what? Even though, you know, this sucks and this sucks and this sucks, I'm going to buy another one, regardless of the bugs, regardless of whatever problems they have. I'm an Apple fan. However, how many people do you think hate Apple? How many people do you think, and I don't mean people who have never tried Apple. I mean, people who use Apple products and they absolutely hate them. They don't like them. They don't like the customer service. They don't like the way they work. Think about people like the president, Donald Trump. 50% of the country hates him. Literally, if you put him in a room with a random sample of the population, of 100 people from the population, there's a good chance that 2-3% of the people there would be willing to go to jail to murder him, 
Like that's how div divided people are about this guy. And yet he's in the most powerful position on planet earth. Or again, think about a company like Apple. There's a million people on planet earth that hate Apple. They think it's crap. They don't like it. Think about your phone company, you know, billion dollar phone company that you're working with. You hate them. You complain about them. The customer service is not good. You know, there's there's a lot of problems, but they're a billion a billion dollar company. So you then ask yourself, you know, can it make sense for me where I'm at to make sure that 100% of my customers are happy, or can it make sense that I'm going to make sure that 100% of the products are always out on time, or does it make sense for me? that I, I'm going to deal with 100% of the sales calls that I'm doing, that I'm going to have to do 100% of the sales calls myself? Uh, the answer is obviously no. When you scale, then complexity arises. The more you scale, the more you're going to have to hire those owners that we've talked about. And eventually the executives, the executives, like literally the people who are going to build a company inside your company, uh, because it's so big that at this point you're dealing with subsidiaries and literally building sub companies. Imagine somebody like uh, Richard Branson, you know, amazing guy, billionaire, uh, built the Virgin brand. Uh, and this guy basically has a brand that own that that works across like seventy different industries, from radio to airplanes uh, to 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 phone to cellular to clothing to to music. Uh, and and basically every single business he has. Uh, has an executive. So there's an executive managing that entire operation, that entire business. Uh, and then those executives hire owners that are going to manage the, the different departments in the business. And then those managers have, those owners have managers that are going to manage people. And then there's operators who are going to do their job and just do what they're told. So you have to think bigger. You have to be able to get out of the box that you're currently in. And again, what that means is recognizing that where you're at is an illusion. And how do you know that? How? Because when you hear that, when I say your problems, and again, any problem you can give me right now is an illusion. How can I tell you that with so much confidence? Uh, you guys probably know the, the, the famous uh, atheist uh, uh, idea that uh, it's a very strong argument. And again, I'm not saying in favor or against atheism or religiousness, but for logical purposes, there's a very strong atheist argument that basically says, um, you know, how do you know that your religion is uh, true? And then you say, oh, I, I know that's true because I know that it's true. And then you say, okay, what about, uh, what about the Islam? What about uh, pagans? What about uh, Buddhists? Uh, are, they, are their religions true? Is there, is, are, they, uh, are they correct? And you say, no. And then you say, you know, what do you mean? No, but you said, how, how do you know? Uh, and, and what this story leads to is basically, you know, maybe I'm an atheist. And again, I'm not saying I'm or not, but the, the idea behind the story is, you know, I'm an atheist, you're religious. Uh, the only difference is uh, you uh, don't believe, I, I don't believe in any religion. You don't believe in any religion except just one. So basically 99% of the religions you say they're, they're crap. They don't, they're, they're, they're not true, but just mine is. So where I'm going with this story is very simple. How do you know that your problems are not real? Everything below your current level of consciousness up to this point, you don't consider it a problem anymore. So, you know, if I told you right now that you're uh, not going to be able to get everything you want at any moment, in, like all the time, whatever you want uh, immediately, um, are you going to start crying? Are you going to start uh, uh, complaining or, or, or yelling or getting pissed off about it? No, uh, because that's what you thought when you were a kid. And that was the paradigm you're at. And whenever anything happened that wasn't according to plan, you would immediately, you know, freak out, lose it. That's what, that's what little kids do. Again, I know because I have a, a one-year-old. Let's get forward a few stages. You know, you just started your business and you, you had one sale and that sale didn't go through and maybe you even lost $200 uh, on that sale. Uh, you remember probably how stressed you were, you know, how that sale was so important. It was such a big deal. And you just chased that client and, and it had to work and, and, and the stress and the thinking and, you know, just serving that client. Um, that was the level that you're at, you know, hopefully at this point you're at a much higher level. And now if I tell you, you know, imagine, uh, you know, imagine one client uh, complains about something or imagine one client uh, backs out of a deal. 
Uh, are you going to freak out about it? Of course not, because it's in the past. This is this is basically lower level stuff than what I'm dealing with. Or again, imagine you got a ticket for $50. Is that going to ruin your day? If you're at a high enough level, you're going to say, of course not. But when you're a teenager, if you got a $50 ticket, that was the scariest thing in the world because you know, you know, know it was a huge challenge at the time. So you, know, you get to a point where you're at level eight. How do you actually level up? I'm going to say one last time. You realize that this is an illusion. And what that means is whatever problems you're facing, you have to look at them and say, you're not real, you're not real, you're not real. And that doesn't mean that there's no situation. You know, you have a client that they're not happy. That's not, that, that is a real situation. Or let's say, you know, your business has to make an extra $30,000 just to close the month. That's a real situation. You know, I'm not saying it's not real. Uh, it, it is a situation. However, the magnitude that you've attributed to that problem is not real. It's in your head and it's a, a cause of your paradigm. So again, let's say one client complains, you did everything you could, it was a huge problem, you solved it. Or you, you had a $50,000 deficit to make to break even this month. You, you pushed hard, you, you wrecked your life, but you got it done. Uh, you're gonna be happy about it. Again, it's a, it looks like a victory, it's really not because you just solved the problem on the level of paradigm that you're currently at. How do you move up a paradigm? So let's get to that. The way you do that is by thinking in bigger proportions than what you've done so far and being it, being willing to go up a level. So as long as you get engaged by these problems, as long as you let your current problems be the main factor in your life, be the main thing that you're thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis, you're never going to go up because again, you're emotionally manipulated by them. The way you do that is you have to increase your, your, your magnitude of thinking and you have to go into a scaling mindset. So, so there's a problem, okay? You have to close $50,000 uh, to break even this month. Or there's, there's two clients that are complaining. You're afraid that they're going to leave you because you only have six clients. And if two of them leave, you lost 30, 30 something percent of your revenue. The answer is you don't solve it at the level that it was created. If you need $50,000 to break even this month, you need to start thinking, how do I make an extra $5,000, $500,000 this month? If you've got two clients that are saying that they're going to leave you and that's going to be a big deal. And these are the problems that you're dealing with. Saving these clients won't solve your problem. It's just going to create an, another illusion, illusory win that's then going to result in another problem later. Because as you know, in life, there's problems, solutions, problems, solution. Like it never ends. There's always another problem. There's always another situation to deal with. The question is, what kind of problems do you want in life? You know, do you want the same problems that you're used to, or do you want bigger and bigger and bigger problems? You know, because again, when I started this business, my problems were, you know, I had to do the customer service. So I had to cust to service every single client that entered the company. Uh, I've had to manually write the emails for every single client that work with us. Uh, I've had to uh, do every single sales call. I've had to make sure that employees were doing what they were supposed to do. And at some point, again, because of my ambitions, because I knew I always wanted to go up as fast as possible, I realized I'm going to have to let go of these things. I'm going to have to start thinking bigger. And it's, it's both striving higher, uh, but even more than that, it's being willing to let go. It's being willing to stop the train for a second and just saying, I'm not going to engage with these size of problems anymore. I'm going to engage in bigger levels of problems. And when you do that, you don't just help yourself, you help the world. Okay. Because now when I run a business that makes almost seven figures, I'm able to help a lot more people. You know, I'm able to invest in myself a lot more. I'm able to, to give jobs to dozens of people. I'm able to, to uh, educate myself. I'm able to help my family. You know, if they need an extra money, if they need some help, I can actually do that. And I'm, I can't wait to get to the next level you know, where I can even increase the circle of influence more, which is what I'm pushing for every single day. And again, I'm not perfect on this. I am a working product and project, I'm a working progress just like every single person here. But this is what I want you to focus on. This is what should be the main focus in your life. It's not how do I solve the problems that I currently have. It's how do I solve my problems in a way that they're not going to be problems anymore. And that's how you get it done. So So you have to increase the, the, the level of thinking. You have to think in a bigger proportion. And that means taking bolder actions to get to where you want to get, you know, to get to those higher levels of problems, you're going to have to make sense 
of doing things that don't make sense. Okay, the, it, it, there's no other way about it. You, there's no way you can scale and go up to new levels without doing some stuff where you're saying, I cannot believe that I'm doing this, or this does not feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Um, and you want to scale, you know, you want to do that. You want to get a level nine, you want to then get to level 10, which encapsulates, you know, all, all, all of these, uh, and so on and so forth. And you want to just go up and up and up and up. Uh, and that's how you actually live a life that's, that's really fulfilling. That's how you live a life where, uh, you know, you don't regret it later. You don't uh, sit back later and say, um, you know, what did I do with my time? Did I actually live the life that I wanted to live? Because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, when you're uh, older, when you're, uh, you know, kind of out of opportunities at this point, uh, what you'll realize is that every single problem you've had in your life. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you finished at level five or at level 500, you'll realize that all of these problems were, were meaningless. Like none of them uh, actually was as big as you thought uh, that, that it was, you know, no matter how much you've done, no matter how much you've, you've helped. And then what you're left with is your contribution. So you're actually left with how much did, did I actually produce? Like how much did I uh, spend time worrying about that one or two clients versus how much time, uh, how much actual benefit did I give the world? How many people did I affect? How many people did my products help? Uh, did my service uh, contribute to? Uh, how many people did I feed? How many people did did I inspire? And uh, if you if you you have those ambitions, if you want to get to those higher levels and places, you're going to have to think bigger. You're going to have to be willing to let go of existing beliefs and existing affects with regards to issues. And you're going to have to say, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. I'm going in a higher level and it's going to be scary and it's going to be chaos. So, you know, you cannot go from level eight to level nine, from level nine to level 10 without chaos. And again, how do I know this? When you go from a teenager to a young adult, how much chaos is there? You know, how much uh, uh, emotional pain and drama and craziness, you know, when you go and you then go from a young adult and become an actual adult, how much does life just slap you in the face and, and how many new problems do you face with? So, you know, the, 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 the problems keep, uh, keep coming at you. It's not that, that at level 10, uh, there's no more problems. There's always going to be problems. The question is, do you want to deal with small problems or do you want to deal with massive problems? Do you want your focus to be, how do I keep this one or two clients? Or do you want it to be, how do I make sure that my 2000 clients are getting the best service in the world? Do you want your problems to be, uh, how do I make sure I, I, I close the month well with another $200,000 in revenue? Or do you want your problems to be uh, how many factories can we open across the, the world? And you know, how many people can we actually affect using our products on a global scale? So that's, uh, that's my recommendations, guys. That's, that's what I would suggest for you to do. That's what I'm doing on a daily basis. And uh, again, it's tough. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's really tough. And uh, you're going to have to make decisions where you give up stuff. So um, you cannot uh, deal with one thing in your current level uh, if you're hoping to get to the next level. You're going to have to always keep pushing up and you're not going to be able to push up um, unless you've got good people that can then help you uh, go up. Because if I'm thinking about the problems here and I have to deal with them on my own, uh, I'm not going to be able to move up. So I'm going to have to find great people that can help me uh, mitigate those problems somewhat so I can focus my attention on getting to level nine, level 10, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions uh, about what we've discussed so far, uh, let me know. Um, it, again, just you can text them here or you can just ask to speak to unmute yourself and I'll let you ask your question and then I'll respond. I promise you guys I'm very, uh, I'm very good at answering questions, especially if they're very specific. Uh, let's move on to the final topic. Um, the final topic that I want to... Uh, get over here is, uh, is your goals. And, uh, it's, it's about how to actually secure your, your, your level ups, you know, how do you actually reach a point, uh, where you're on a steady course to go up? Um, you know, many people talk about, uh, motivation. They talk about, um, what do I need to do to be motivated? What do I need to do to, to strive higher? Uh, and they always think about these things in positive terms. So, 
one of the biggest mistakes that people make uh, when they think about goals or motivation is they think, what is going to make me happy? Uh, what is going to make me feel good? Uh, what is going to be fulfilling? And this is the, these are the wrong questions to ask yourself because uh, uh, the journey is always going to be hard. Like there's no, there's no way you can go from level eight to nine or nine to 10 uh, or not, or, you know, 50 to, to 500 uh, without going through a lot of hardships. Every single level uh, is going to be very painful. It's going to be painful because it's almost like shedding your skin. You know, imagine the, the scene in the matrix uh, where Neo had to take the pill and he had to go down that insane tube, get, get, you know, weird shit happening to him uh, and, and really just go through kind of a rebirth. Uh, that's what you're going to have to go through every paradigm that you go up. Uh, so what's going to motivate you? What's going to actually make you make that decision? Because it's not an easy decision and it's not something that you can force yourself to do. Uh, it's something that if you put yourself in the right place, it's going to happen naturally. And the way that you put yourself there is you ask one of the, one of the most poignant and tough questions that anybody can ask. And this is a question that literally nobody ever asks themselves, uh, and, uh, and that's why you may feel stuck. You know, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you are, you know, maybe you're moving forward, but most people are stuck. Um, what do you need to ask yourself? The question is simple. What am I willing to do if this is me? What goal do I need to set? You know, what goal, what, what destination do I need to set to get through a week of getting bricks thrown at my face, just getting the crap beaten out of me, just getting punched every day, you know, kicked in the nuts, uh, going through hardships, being scared, being uncomfortable, making decisions where I'm still not sure what I'm doing, uh, having chaos. What's, what is it going to take for me to to go through a week of just crap, just a week of nonstop crap. And then you want to take that question and you want to start to amplify it. Okay, so I'd be willing to go, and again, that will determine, that will show you where you're at in terms of your paradigm, what level you're at. Would you be willing to go through a week of absolute garbage? Again, fear, pain, just nonstop shit for a week for $10,000. Would you be willing to go through that to learn how to sell your product successfully and be good at that? Would you be willing to go through that to make sure that your employees finish the month and, and, uh, and you can actually pay them? What do you need to go through to, 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 to what, what goal do you need to have to get there? So again, most people, when they think of goals, they're thinking, um, Basically, they're thinking, what goal would motivate me? What goal would make me happy? No, the opposite. What am I willing to suffer for? Then you want to upgrade it. What am I willing to suffer for uh, for a month? What am I willing to go through a full month of just terrible, terrible, terrible time? What am I willing to go through six months? And then a year. What am I willing to go through a decade? What am I willing to go through... What, what goal do I need to have so that I'd be willing to suffer my entire life to just go through hardships, never ending hardships for my entire life? What goal would be sufficient? What goal do I need to set to say, yes, it's damn worth it. I'm willing to do that. I'll be happy to do that. I'll be proud to do that. And again, look at people that we all admire, you know, look at people like Steve Jobs or people like Elon Musk, you know, Elon Musk basically sold his company for $150 million. I don't remember, if, I think it was PayPal. He immediately took that 150 million, invested everything into two companies. So Tesla, SpaceX, both these companies had less than 15% chance to become successful. And that's not even considering that they were done simultaneously. Uh, both of them were this close to bankruptcy. And again, you, you want to learn how close they were to bankruptcy. Just read his book, like to the point where a day later, the company would have gone bankrupt 
but they managed to solve it to 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 save it at the last minute. He went through years of of brutal torture, just eighteen hour days, complete financial instability, complete madness, and just think what would it take for you to go from a hundred and fifty million in the bank to not having basically having to take a loan and that's a real that's a real story having to take a loan to rent where you live what would it take for that and and for elon the the answer is it the goal he had is i want to make human beings an interplanetary species i want to save mankind and put us in a situation where we can leave the planet and and everything uh you know would work out well Uh, so that's how big his goal had to be to get into that life commitment. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that. You know, I'm still looking for that. But if you don't have that, if you're not currently motivated by a clear goal where you know um, that you'll be willing to suffer for that goal, uh, that means you're not going to go up the paradigm. Because if you're not suffering for something, That means you're existing. That means you're just, uh, you're just kind of living your life, hoping things will get better. And they don't, that's a problem. You know, you have to force yourself to think a lot, to think bigger, to actually make it work. So, uh, I would really challenge every single one of you to kind of take what I gave you today, uh, starting with talking about, uh, hiring and talking about how you want to hire, uh, the right level of people. And we're going to wrap up at any moment. So. Uh, again, if you want to ask questions, that's probably the final opportunity to do it. What do you do, uh, you know, in terms of hiring, you know, you got to hire people that are in the owner, the executive, but you're not going to do that if you're not at a high enough level, then how you go to the higher level, you have to be willing to look at the problems you have in your life. Look at the things that are currently occupying your mental and emotional focus. Realize these are not problems. They're not real. They're illusionary. They're situations. There's a problem. The situation problem is not real situation is real your soup is cold you know that's a that's actually a lesson I learned from a spiritual teacher you know you got a soup the soup is cold if you're gonna say oh how dare they why is the soup cold how dare they do that to me what kind of service is that that's a problem problems are not real they're illusions if you however say the soup is cold can you please heat it up that's a situation again you take out the situation you take out the problem you just you Keep the situation that's how you realize you're in the floor you, you know you're stuck in your floor and that's when that's how you actually realize because it's the emotions that are keeping you hypnotized it's the emotions the the fact that everything matters so much that keeps you engaged at this level not allowing you to go up to a higher level because everything feels so important there's no time to think in, in any bigger terms you know how can I think about a hundred million dollars when I've got a million dollar problem you know so that's uh, next topic and then finally, Uh, what would I be willing to to suffer for? What would I be willing to really, really uh, just take a beating for, to take a beating for a week for, a month for, six months, a year, more than that? Um, that is how you set it up. That is how you, you choose.